Please pray with me. Lord, take me where you want me to go. Let me meet who you want me to meet. Tell me what you want me to say, and please keep me out of your way. Amen. It's rare that I focus on the Old Testament reading that uh, Bob read today, but I am. This Sunday is a little different. It's all about Solomon, and we all have a vague knowledge of Solomon, don't we? The wisdom of Solomon is one of those cliches that has entered our lexicon. Who exactly was Solomon? Well, he was the son of David. Yes, King David. You remember David. He slayed Goliath, the Philistine, and he made his king so happy when he did that, he allowed him to marry one of his daughters and thus join into the royal family. And it was under David that the Israelites achieved their greatest glory. The two kingdoms, the southern kingdom and the northern kingdom, came together. And this was a time of peace and splendor for the land of Israel. And Solomon, like his father, was a good but flawed king. He asked for something no one had ever asked for. In a dream, God came to him and said, what would you have me give you? The wisdom of Solomon. His request was wisdom. You must have heard the story, of course, of the two women who come to Solomon with one infant between them. They had lived in the same household and one of them's baby boy had died and now they were both claiming this child because a male child continued to keep the family line going and promised the mother retirement and care as he aged. So this child would have been very valuable. And Solomon, now so wise, and it perhaps crafty as well, when t asked to decide who the true mother was, suggested of cutting the baby in half and giving each a portion. Of course, the mother of the child screamed out, no, 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 give the child to her. I do not want it killed. And Solomon instantly realized that her self-sacrificing identified her as the true mother. This is the great story that tells us of his wisdom. And the Lord was so pleased with Solomon that he asked for wisdom and not for power or riches or some great long life. So wisdom he got heaps and heaps of it. But also get, God also gave Solomon so much more, so many qualities of life that he did not or would not even have thought of asking for. Now being wise and using your wisdom for God is also the theme in Paul's letter to the Ephesians that Julie just read today. He reminds those Ephesians to be wise and to make the most of each and every day. But making the most of each day is not about fulfilling our own wishes, but asking God what he wants us to do on this day. And it's not enough to know what God wants us to do. We must also do it. Have you ever had that feeling you knew the right thing to do, but you didn't do it? Sure, I have. We must follow our beliefs with actions. And finally, Paul reminds the Ephesians to give thanks for everything that they have. Now, the teenage years are not often associated with wisdom, are they? They're times 
of experimentation, times of rebellion, times of challenging the status quo, but they're not times we associate with wisdom. Times of trying to get wisdom, yes, but not necessarily having it, even as teens might think that they do. Any youth mission trip, like our own recent trip to Costa Rica, is a microcosm of this. The trip begins with everyone thinking that they know about life, about themselves, about what other people in other countries are like. But as the week unfolds, bit by bit, they open themselves up to the Holy Spirit. Each person on this mission team began to seek something more outside of themselves, to learn new ways of doing things, to listen to others, to set aside their own personal interests for a while, and to help in new ways. They let the Holy Spirit in, you see, and they let it shine through them and their actions for all to see and be inspired by. Now to some, and I'm sure to everyone on the mission trip, this, team, this seems a little bit like exaggerating. But another, just another example of Father Jim and his much beloved Southern storytelling ways. But listen to me, folks. This is what putting God first is all about. Doing God's work and following his call. It's Christian witness, as sure as it is Christian witness, when we feed the hungry on Saturday morning at our breakfast or deliver meals to seniors during the week or treat people with kindness and respect when they shop in our thrift stores on Saturday. And it becomes like a beacon, a light in the darkness where God's love is able to shine through. I witnessed it in a thousand ways on our mission trip and how the youth played with school children from the slums of San Jose and how hard they worked to build the Church of the Ascension and how they bonded with one another so tight and how they supported one another in trials small and large and most importantly how they set aside their own desires their own agenda to indeed do God's will yes that's the light I'm talking about something we can all see right and God gave them each what they needed to accomplish the work for the week. But just like Solomon, God gave them so much more. They each experienced God in new and profound ways, ways that will touch their lives forever, whether they recognize it right now or not. And by their own personal shining example, we are touched and reminded of God's call to us in our lives and you don't go, have to go far as uh, you don't have to go as far as they did to do it in fact you can do it right here right now you do it in the passing of the peace to one another in welcoming the visitor that might be amongst us today in the offer of care and support for one another in times of trouble you can do it in the support of this little piece of God's kingdom right here in Warwick. Our Old and our New Testament readings, like our youth mission trip, are all reminders to put God and his work first in our lives. And in doing so, he will satisfy our deepest needs and sort everything out. Isn't that a relief to really know you don't have to sort everything out. God will. God's will can be hard. Mission trips are hard. All you have to do is ask 
the other chaperones and they'll tell you how hard the work was for the teenagers and for ourselves. But to be true, every ministry at this church is hard work. Every single one of us work hard to accomplish the goals God has for us. But remember, God promises to see us through His work. Of that, I'm sure. Amen.